What were your uh, initial impressions of uh, the Macho Man, Randy Savage? Loved him. Tremendous performer. One of the best I've ever seen. I've always said the greatest match that I've ever witnessed in my life was WrestleMania three, Macho Man against Ricky Steamboat. I don't think there's ever been a match on this planet that was better than that one. Well, you're, I guess Randy, behind the scenes, we've done interviews with a ton of the boys, and they say he was really protective of Elizabeth, obviously. Why not? It's his wife. Did you see anything, like the paranoia or anything? I've heard stories where he would lock her in closets. And... Oh, I don't, I don't know if he locked her in closet, but he did hover over her and really never let her out of his sight too much. But you know what? I never paid attention to that because I wasn't that type of person. I wasn't going to hit on Elizabeth. I right. wasn't going to do so. Really, to me, I took care of myself, and I just looked at Macho and Elizabeth as two performers, and I treated them accordingly with respect of what they did. Who did you travel with back then? Nobody. Just... John Studd. John Studd? John Studd was probably the guy I traveled with the most. I liked Big John. He was a family man. He had a wife and kids in D.C. Uh, he's a veteran like myself. John was in the Army when I was in the Navy. Well, not when, but we were both veterans. So I would say Big John Studd was probably the guy I was closest to in the WWF at that time. Okay. Did you have a lot of interaction with a lot of the boys? Nope. Nope. Stayed to yourself? Yep. Okay. What are your memories about teaming with Randy? Uh, as well? Only thing I remember is I had to lay there and take the elbow, and boy, that was scary. Guy moved out of the way. That was the finish, and Mach hits me with it, and I made him carry me out on a stretcher. And that was done at uh, the, the uh, place in Long Island, Nassau. Right. Because I thought, Jesus, any, who's going to get up from this? So I made him carry me out of the ring on a stretcher after he hit me with the elbow by mistake, of course. You also had the body shop. Whose idea was that? Uh for that interview segment, was that a, uh, Vince. Vince's idea? Yeah, because Roddy was doing good with his, and so they thought they'd do one on the alternative program with me and Gorilla. Right. So we started, when Piper's Pit went, they started the body shop then. Did uh, any of the boys ever get upset with, with you, I guess, for anything you had said to them? Upset? No, not no, at all. I, 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 I embarrassed a few. I remember my greatest one was when I got the killer bees in the body shop and they had just returned from a trip to Australia. Right. And I looked at it, the both killer bees, I said, so tell me, while you guys were in Australia, did you manage to drop any pollen? Huh. Right. Oh my God, Brian Blair and Brunzel just froze up. <laughs> they looked at me like, how the hell do we say something after that? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> And in fact, Brian came, Brian's a good friend. Brian came up to me later, he goes, Jesse, you SOB, you know, and jokingly. Right. He said, how do you hell do you expect us to answer something like that? Did you drop any pollen while you're in That's Australia? Awesome. <laughs> in other words, I was asking if they got laid. Right. Obviously, right. That's awesome. <laughs>